Hey everyone, it's Fofo Tsukiyomi. Today I'm going to be talking about Nagi's downfall because it is the biggest downfall we've ever seen in Blue Lock, especially from a second main character who has his own spin off manga. Yeah, there's been so many hints, so let's cover them all and then find the main points that did bring him down. Anyway, let's get to it. To be honest, from the moment he stepped in that room, he was done, bro. Man was the last person to be called out. Chris Prince knew this man didn't give a damn in the world, and that's why he called him out last. When he was explaining his ideal, he basically just said to be the saggy, Chris Crescent, and on, doesn't he want to be the best in the world? Like, that isn't a mentality to be the best in the world. Nagi says he really doesn't know, and he'll think about that later. And Chris Prince is forced to just have to go along with this. But Chris points out something special. The fact that Nagi explained that he just receives passes from Isagi and Rayo to score. And he just says, you're a baby chick who's useless without them feeding you. And he's like, pretty much that is the reason why I can't beat Isagi. Which is pretty sad, bro. Now, Aggie and Chris come up with a formula, mainly Aggie, to make Nagi's trapping start from zero, which is basically a format that when Nagi gets the ball, he traps it and then he creates his own formula plays because once he traps the game, it's into his own pace. Now, Nagi enters this game by showcasing his new strength and his new um, zero reset turn, which is basically what they were talking about, how Nagi would trap the ball and just take over the way he would like to. The problem is he's not like Isagi and Nagi who can think and always enjoy having new plays. It tires him the hell out. And he has always had this one thing of knowing his um, partner as well. That is the one trade I'll always give Nagi because this play was smart. The way he passed it to Aggie and then Aggie passed it back to him for the juggling shot. While although to others it may piss them off, Nagi knew that only Aggie would have reached it. That's why he did it because it's the most simple way for Nagi to get about it. He wouldn't do something that everyone can do. He can just relate to the person and say, be done with it. So it's something I credit Nagi for, but at the same time, Aggie doesn't realize Nagi for that. Now for Rayo, he has a play style, Nagi has this, he's just supposed to support Nagi and survive, survive in the NEL, but he has to uh, knock his idea, which is to be the striker who can score goals for himself. And he wants to fuse Itoshi Sei and Ren's ideals together. And then Chris Prince talks about what it is. Then Ren is going for his, sorry, Rayo is going for his self-motivation and how it's not Nagi's fault, but he needs to show he can fight out on his own. Oi, Rayo. <sighs> Isagi ni katichai. After some persuading from Nagi, Rayo gives in to being Nagi's sidekick again. And he devotes his whole comedian channel style to making Nagi score a goal. Which was completely different to what he was talking about a minute ago on fighting by himself and committing his comedian style to helping himself score a goal. Bro, Rayo could have been something insane. Now by downfall do I not mean that Nagi is regressing as a person as even when he started to team up with Rayo. It wasn't like in part one where Rayo just told him what to do and it was like yes boss. This time it's like where I was asking, is this where you want it? Is this where you want your last pass to be? And he says, yes, boss, saying that this is what he wants to do, not what he's just complying to Nagi, I mean to Rayo to do. So Nagi is in control of the play. He just wants it to be from Rayo because he's so used to Rayo. It is not like in part one where it was just him doing whatever Rayo told him to do. By downfall, I mean by his emotional status, his ego went straight to hell, and also all his motivation. That's what I mean by downfall. To further prove this, Nagi made this goal happen by himself. Rayo did not tell him to make a five-star volley. Nagi just said, screw it, I'm gonna go in my own mind. And this is a hint to my next video, but it has a lot of something to do with Nagi bullying, pulling bullcrap out of his pockets. 
I feel like he can unlock a new weapon against FC Barcher, which can help him score a massive hat trick if he has motivation to do so. Now, his ego just dies after that. Like, it fades away. He just dies calmly. Even his saggy notes that he can't reproduce that same magic again as he's lost it all in motivation. And there will be no more miracle goals for this match and for them. Then Nagi is questioned with what happens after beating Isagi. Chris is furious coming right that he would just die after Isagi. There's nothing left to beat. Even when Nagi, sorry, Rail talks about how they're going to be the best, Nagi is still conflicted by himself. Now, Chris Prince should take fault in this as well because although he did try to help Nagi physically and try to create him a new formula, that is not what Nagi needed. Nagi needed to take time to actually figure out a reason to play football again. Because this whole beating a saggy finger is never going to lead him down well the long road. But no, they focused on zero reset turn. And unfortunately, Nagi already had an idea of how to do that because even if he received weak passes from Isaki, like in the match against Barrow and Narohaya, his genius is the one that made him be able to beat Barrow in that duo. It wasn't because Isaki was even a good passer at the time. So even with bad players, he could still make the most out of it if he put a bit of effort into thinking of a plan, which he did in the second selection. It's just here, he's just stuck. Bro, bro is stuck. He doesn't know what to do. So it's not that he, he is going to be dull without anything. Ego, do, Ego does make a claim about Nagi, about how he's going to fall because of this, as how it's going to take a have massive danger effect to him. But I say that it's a good thing Nagi's having this downfall because if Nagi didn't beat Isagi and then started to go on a rampage against the whole Neo Eagles League and ran into the Underworld Cup, I mean, there would have been no chance he would have been able to beat Isagi in terms of 1v1, but like, he, he was going to go for a downfall later or sooner because like Bao said, he's been pretending to enjoy football for quite a while. Like, as soon as he scored against Isagi, soccer just wasn't fun for him anymore. So it's important that he fell here instead of later on because if he's going to have a comeback, it's got to be right before the World Cup. He's got to figure himself right before the World Cup. Because if he was to have this downfall in the World Cup, that would be it for him, man. It's better to do it in your comfort zone, which is with the blue lockers, than to do it when you're against the whole world, if you know what I mean. Nagy isn't terrible at football. He's just having a mental crisis, and I think he needs to resolve it before the World Cup or just drop, man. Um, things I want to talk about as well. Nagy did have a similar situation in the Umbers match to Bastard Munchen, which is when he got through all the defenders. But instead of doing a back heel pass to Rail, he did get scared, and Nagy... Um, Rayo just told him to shoot and Lorenzo just stopped him as well as IQ with their amazing head save. Now in terms of Rin, Nagi said it himself. Rin grew insanely, like all his specs were different. Nagi really did try to stop him, but it was like you couldn't do anything against Rin. Rin just had a bye week, which means he had 20 days off compared to Nagi having 10 days off. And ever since the Isagi game, I don't think he's really been trying in the gym. So Rin must have surpassed him. And then to go face a team that is Uber is the best defensive team. It is a hard hurdle to do those weeks back to back after being mentally conflicted. I mean, he could have probably at least scored one goal against Ubers, but still like being mentally conflicted against the best team and then the best defensive team. What are you going to expect Nagi to do, bro? Like, I think even with or without the mental issues, he still will do a good against FC Barcha. But further down the line, he does need to have a talk with someone or just say goodbye to football. So, yeah, it's sad to say, but Nagi, I really don't think this guy wants to be here anymore. Like, I think soccer just died for him after Isagi. Unless he finds a new reason, 
Nagy's not making it back because although he isn't a terrible footballer, he's like still one of the best, the world doesn't see it anymore. This is Blue Lock, a world full of egos. Scoring goals matter. And if he doesn't have an ego and he doesn't have goals, people are going to bring him down. And Blue Lock will just cancel him out. He won't survive. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas Eve and peace out. I'm also having a collab video with my friend, companion, butter. So check out for that later. Peace.